and we're back on the floor. We're at that part of the sequence where we've already done all of our standing shenanigans and now we're back where it all started, on the floor. Today we'll look at the jump throughs and the modifications that you can do until you get the jump throughs and then we'll also talk about seated forward folds and we'll practice Ashtimottanasana or Pasimottanasana seated forward fold. Let's start with the jump throughs. So this is what more or less jumping through your arms looks like. You press the palms down and you keep your arms straight. If you bend your arms, there's less space to jump through. So you want this height. And then you externally rotate the arms to bend the knees, bring navel in, push down through the hands so that you push away and you have more space. And then at the end of the exhale is the easiest point to jump through. Yeah, it doesn't have to look like anything, you just have to find yourself sitting on your back. If this is already too much for you, then there's a lot of modifications. But let's just break it down once more. So you want to have these straight arms pressing against the ground, because if you see in my scapula is elevated, I have more space, more height, and therefore more margin to jump through. So it's important to keep pressing the palms on the ground, externally rotate the arms, so this is what it looks like, but my hands are fixed on the ground, so my elbow points turn to the front, externally rotating the arms, widening the elbows, again this gives me more space, and it's better for the neck. And then from here, It's important to have the core engagement. Navel in and out is what's gonna get you there because you want to, like we we're saying in other videos, be compact so that you have more space to get through. And then crossing the legs also gives you more space because it's less space to come up here than to come up here. Pelvic floor engaged, navel in and up, and then pick up the back wall of ribs so that the ribs are closed, and short blades, well short blades are actually up and wide because you're elevating the scapula, and then everything is in, so let's try it once again. And your hands on the mat, externally rotate the arms, press all knuckles down, tuck toes under, exhale, come back, bend the knees, bring navel in, gaze forward, make a prayer, keep pressing away, elevating the scapula, straighten the arm, and push to come through. As you saw, by not crossing the legs, I have less space. So let's now cross the legs. And jump through. And I have more space to jump through. If you want to practice this elevation, you can always just do malasana lifts or simple lotus legs lifts. If you have full lotus, that's the easiest way to practice it because the feet are not underneath and they're not in the way you bring the hands further in front than the hip points so somewhere in between the knees and the hips elbows in, so external rotate the arms shoulder blades down and press knuckles down to lift and hold now, if you don't have full lotus, you can go for the half lotus variation. And if you don't have half lotus, you can go for the cross-legged variation. 
What's important is to start feeling the engagement of the arms, the strength in the arms, and the push that brings you up. So even if you don't bring the feet off the floor, that's fine. Maybe then you bring one foot and then the other with time. You don't have to be able to do these lifts to do the jump through, but it does help you have that core strength. Modifications. If you want more height, you can always place your hands on blocks. I do not really use props in my practice because it's more convenient not to. <laughs> but I have had times in my practice where I was using props and props can really help you understand things more and they can help you make things easier but also make things more difficult. In this case, putting the blocks under the hands would make the jump through easier because you have again more height. It helps me that I have long arms, so I'm, it depends also on your anatomy, um, but having blocks under your hands will give you more space to bring able in and jump through and make it graceful, keep pressing down. Um, the other option is of course to just bring the feet wherever they want to come and then walk them forward. So pressing the hands down, you jump and then you walk the feet forward and try to keep pressing the hands down. And you can always just walk all the way. So let's try this the other way. So going back, so going back, as I said, you can start with this lift and then you can walk back. So you can walk forward and walk back, keeping the hands fixed on the floor the whole time. And finally, how to actually hop back? Well, as I said, you have to bring the hips further behind, have more space. You can leave the chest forward, but keep the shoulder blades down, elbows in, and then by keeping shoulder blades down, you're already ready for the chaturanga. They stay where they are, and the elbows will bend, the chest will come forward, and you'll go to chaturanga. So press all knuckles down, lift up, and then go up to chaturanga. Inhale up, and next so. The other thing you can use is momentum. So on the way forward, you bend the knees and you make sure you have the height and then you cross the legs and make sure that you change the cross of the legs. So don't always cross the same way. And then coming back, you can kind of use some momentum. So coming forward and back and using that to hop back. What it takes is practice. So just keep practicing, do the walkthroughs, and then with time, do some hops, and then you'll get to the jump throughs. Now once you're here, and since you're here, let's talk about the forward folds. With the forward folds, as I said before, you want to keep that back bend in the lower back. So you can use your hands to manually move the six bones back. Because if you're sitting on the six bone, then you don't have the space to move forward. See, if I'm here, this is all I can do. But I have to bring my sit bones back. And now I have a back bend that I can take advantage of while moving forward. Now it's all about the muscle engagements. You want to press the heels on the ground and flex the feet so that you engage the thighs and stretch the hamstrings. And then from here, you press the balls of the feet away from you and you press the heels away from you to keep moving the pubis back. So it's a lot of work on the legs, but I just got out of bed and I can get there because I'll do the right engagements. Otherwise, if I just stretch and make a shape, I'll end up damaging myself, I'll end up injuring myself, and we don't want that. No, we don't. I don't. Do what you want. So press heels away, 
to bring Cubis back, then bring Navel in and out, and lead tailbone back, and then bring crown of the head forward and shoulder blades back. If you want to, you can grab the big toes with the index and middle finger and open up the elbows to come lower. Hands can stay on the mat, elbows in, and keep pulling yourself back. So choose your variation and let's stay there for five. Then heels and balls of feet away from you and bring pubis back. Four, four. Pull in the lower belly and bring tailbone back and curl it back and up like a happy dog. Four, three. Bring crown of the head forward, shoulder blades back, navel in and forward, tailbone back, four, two. And one more time, press heels away from you, both of the feet away from you, press heels on the ground, contract the thighs, and lift the bindu point forward, four, one. Keep pressing the feet away as you come back. And that's important. So coming into poses and getting out of poses is the point where you often are most at risk. So while you're coming out of the forward fold, make sure that you keep all the muscle engagements and the blocks. And that's what's going to keep you safe. With the rest of the forward folds, it's the same principles. So let's say you go for the Janushishasana head to knee pose, make sure that the bent knee is secure, so <laughs> if the knee touches the ground then press the knee down, otherwise you can press the heel onto the right inner groin, and then you press away the right heel and the right ball of the foot, you press the heel down to engage the thigh, and by pressing the foot away you bring the right side of the pubis back, Navel in and forward, tailbone back and up. So uncurl the right tailbone, the right side of the tailbone, and then crown the head forward and down. And again, the hands can go wherever is better for you. If you want to go for the full bind, then by all means, but keep, keep pressing heel and ball away, toes back, shoulder blades back, crown of the head forward. And then keep engaging while inhaling and coming back. I'll see you tomorrow for the sequence that includes a lot of variations forward folds and we'll also be doing the jump through a couple of times so that you practice your choice of the jump through or a walk through. <laughs>